Welcome to my studio today. I thought I'd talk a little bit about chops, chop placement, because that seems to be the quandary for many brush painters. How many chops should I use and where do I place them on my painting once it's completed? Uh, the first thing to remember is always put your chops on before you mount your painting. And if you have something that is more uh, where you filled up most of the paper, I would recommend that you just use your name chop. And by now, most of you have a name chop. If not, you can order one from nanray.com and just go to supplies and order your name chop. So on this painting of bamboo, I'm just going to use my name chop and I won't use any mood or side seals along with it. And I think the lower right hand corner will be fine. And we want to always try and have our chop, our name chop, straight. So try really work at not having it at an angle. So the next thing would be when we have a painting where we have more room to breathe, where the composition is such that you have your main subject and then you have all this wonderful space. So the decision would be where to place the chops. And on this one, I might even put my name chop over here and then add two mooder side seals. So let's see how that's going to work. Or another thing I could do is I could have all three seals lined up but we don't want to use more than three. So that would be two mood seals in addition to your name chop. And I know what you're thinking. You, you say, well, when I go to a museum or I look in a book and I see all those chops on a painting, what does that mean? That really helps curators to determine the provenance of a painting because we can see from certain chops that the emperor, emperor so-and-so owned the painting, and then that also helps to date it. So in the East, if uh, you owned a painting and you loved it, you could put your chop anywhere. If we owned a Monet, we would not think of writing our name on it, but in the East, it's not considered defacing the artwork. In fact, sometimes if the emperor or the owner love the painting so much, sometimes they would write a poem. Uh, they put their calligraphy on the painting. So sometimes you can see a lot of calligraphy on a painting in addition to many, many chops. So that way we can see all the successive owners of that particular painting. So uh, I have a collection. Many brush painters collect uh, a lot of mood or side seals. This is a very large one. And it has a beautiful carving of two tigers on it and then some trees in the background. And this was carved to say the chi of the brush. And I have this carved because of my book, The Chi of the Brush. And it's so lovely. The stone itself is so beautiful. And then this particular one I had carved in China. And this says Journey of the Imagination. And that was what I titled the uh, tour that I led going to China. So this beautiful chop uh, I had carved and it has a, actually it's a year of the rooster, it has a beautiful rooster on it. So that's really wonderful. And then I have all sorts of different sizes with different sayings on them. But you always want to have at least your name chop on every painting. Because in the East, that's how you sign everything. You would even sign a check using your, your name chop. So this is very valuable. So, so I did say that I might put my name in this lower left-hand corner. Let's just see how that looks. And notice I'm, I'm pressing very hard and I'm rocking back and forth. I want to be sure I make a nice, clear, clean imprint. I'm going to set this aside for the moment. And then this particular mood seal says, life spent like this would be joyful indeed. So 
I think this peony really speaks to a saying like that, and also I think it can um, contain a larger seal. So you'll notice I'm using seal paste, and this is uh, a mineral, it's an oil-based paste, and uh, it doesn't, um, you don't clean it off, you, you won't be cleaning these off with water, and I'll show you that later. And my hope is that I get this lined up straight, and I think this would be a nice place to put it. And again, I'm going to press very hard, making sure I get a nice imprint there. And then I'm going to take this seal, which says the reporting of good news. Well, everyone wants the reporting of good news. So let's get that one a little bit lower, maybe just right underneath here. And let me see. And just press, press, press down. Okay, there. All right, now, truth be said, if I had been standing up, this would have been a little bit straighter, and I would be a great deal happier. So, um, but these are the seal placements on this particular painting. And they always will enhance your work. Now you'll notice that I have some sheets of paper underneath. You can either use a stack of paper underneath or you can take a magazine and that will give you exactly the right consistency. It won't be too hard or too soft and you'll get a good imprint. So it's interesting when we have something like, um, all right, on this painting of poppies, which I like a lot because it has a lot of freedom and it has a lot of my flying white, uh, which is nice. But I'm just going to decide to leave this blank. I could put a mood seal here, but I think I'm just going to put my name over here. And I think for this painting, I feel that because also it's smaller in size, I think that the one name chop will be sufficient. And notice I call this a name chop, and the others that are in different shapes and sizes are mood uh, seals. They're called mood or side seals. And I'm just going to put this right here, and this will identify this work as being mine, right there. All right, now, when we do landscape paintings, we also, for every painting, you want to have your name chop on it. So um, I'm going to put my name. This, as of yet, this is uh, a unfinished work, but I wanted to show you a particular seal that I love so much. And it's rather large and square. And so, Sometimes it can be hard to read the writing because this is ancient script. So when I have something like this, or also if I have a round seal, I put a little dab of nail polish on it so that I know which way is up. So that's always good to do. So this one says, discovering oneself amidst a white cloud on a secluded mountain. Now, what could be lovelier than that? So I'm going to use this in addition to my name chop. And I think um, I may also later on have another mood seal up here. I think one would go very nicely up there, but let me think about that for a moment. So, and making sure I know which way is up and then Again, wanting to keep my border straight and really pressing down. Okay, and then I'll place my name above that. About here. You can tell I'm really pressing down on that. 
like so. And right away, that's adding so much interest to my painting. And remember I said I may add something at the top, so let's just do this one. Life spent like this would be joyful indeed. And so we'll get this at the top. Okay. And again, wanting to be sure that that straight line lines up with my border. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but we try. All right. There. And you can see that even though this is an unfinished work, I'm still going to build up the layers some, but you can see how much the mood seals add to a painting. All right, now the next thing is, once we've used our chop and our seals, how do we clean them off? And that's very important, because remember I said that this is an oil base. So you want to be sure that you get all of that oil off of your chop. And I do it by rubbing and rubbing <laughs> and rubbing until I don't see any more of the oil. And then you want to be sure that you keep them in a safe place. And with the lovely ones, they're, they're just so beautiful to look at. So if you do start a collection where you have beautiful mood seals like this, they're wonderful to put out on display. And I hope this helps a lot.